Look at this thing. Just bobbling around. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Glad to see you guys again. Last week we had a visit from one of the Hula Girls' own go-go dancers, Miss Audrey Lorraine. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch it. She was super funny on the episode. We made an incredible cocktail from Don the Beachcomber, the QB Cooler, which was the predecessor to the Mai Tai. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good episode. But tonight we have a cocktail that I decided to do because my friends from the Contigo Tiki Bar are producing a historic mug. This isn't necessarily a tiki mug. This is a mug that was seen in photographs from the episodes of The Hawaiian Eye. The Hawaiian Eye was a TV show that ran from 1959 to 1963. It is damn near impossible to find, even on the internet, even on YouTube, even anywhere. So all you can find are kind of are these clips. It starred Robert Conrad and Connie Stevens. It took place in Hawaii in the early days of the tiki resurgence. Everybody always said, Hawaii Five-0 is kind of tiki, and it's like, no, it's not. Not really. Hawaiian Eye is tiki. All of the wardrobe, I mean, it was there 59 to 63, like during the golden age of tiki. The most magical time. The outfits are incredible, the cars are incredible, the scenery, the clips that I've seen, it's got like Robert Conrad surfing, and it's real surfing. It's like Robert Conrad actually surfing, actually paddled out on a board and, and was surfing Waikiki. Not like, uh, not like Batman surfing, where he's just kind of like in front of a rear screen projection and he's like, oh, I'm catching the wave now, dudes. No, not like that. Like, authentic. It's rad. I just wish that we could get a hold of the whole series. But in Burbank, California, where they were filming the episodes, there was a bar called The China Trader. And a guy named Tony Ramos invented a cocktail because the cast and the crew we're always coming to the China Trader to have cocktails after filming, and so he named this cocktail the Hawaiian Eye. And so for this cocktail, we will be using limes, simple syrup, this is just one to one sugar to water, falernum from PG Reynolds, a light aged rum, we're gonna be using the Cruzon, and a gold Puerto Rican rum, we'll be using the Bacardi 8. All right, let's jump into this one. For this cocktail, we need half an ounce of lime juice. One half an ounce of Falernum. A half an ounce of sugar syrup. One half an ounce of light rum. and one full ounce of Bacardi 8. So that's the cocktail right there. We're gonna get some crushed ice. Couple scoops here. Give it a smack and away we go. tin is nice and frosty and we pour it into this brand new mug from the Contigo Tiki Bar. It's a gigantic mug. So we're gonna fill it the rest of the way up with ice. And then brand new from the Contigo Tiki Bar is this incredible hanging lantern pick. That'll go here. We'll put some fresh mint in here. Give it a little bit of a whack to release the oils. Woo, smells delicious. And since this is a beautiful cocktail from Hawaii, well, Burbank, let's put an orchid in there too. Now look at that, how pretty is that? We'll add a straw from Surfside Sips right in the back there. And from 1963, the China Trader in Burbank, California for the production team of the Hawaiian Eye, this is the Hawaiian Eye. Let's give this thing a taste. Fruity, light, delicious, really. Yeah, I don't know what to say about it. It's really just a delicious cocktail. It's um, It would be super accessible to anybody. It's sweet, not very bitter. It's more on the sweet side, but not overbearingly sweet. Not so sweet that you go, uh, dude, I'm not drinking that. It's not overly boozy. It's um, It's just kind of a delightful cocktail. Yeah, it's all right. 
I guess the mix of the sugar syrup, the falernum, and the lime juice kind of creates this uh, this sweet mix. Yeah, it's super good. If anybody out there has copies of the Hawaiian Eye, man, I would love to get my hands on the whole series, really watch the whole thing. Because even just the clips that are on YouTube, the Hawaiian shirts alone are enough for you to go, ah, yeah, I'd love to watch that. Also, I think a lot of it took place at the Shell Bar. And the Shell Bar, of course, was home to Martin Denny and I think Les Baxter and all those guys. It was like ground zero for Exotica. Maybe if Hawaii Five-O was more of a Hawaiiana kind of show, then the Hawaiian Eye was more of like the Exotica show. I But I don't know, I'm speculating. I haven't been able to see it yet, so it's hard to say. But I'll tell you, this is a good cocktail right here. So also my friends at the Contigo Tiki Bar hand recreated this uh, authentic 1960s parasol from Orchids of Hawaii. Pretty rad, dude. Their, their attention to detail is so insane with these hanging lantern picks. And uh, thank God somebody's doing it because for a long time these were totally un unavailable. If you are interested in buying a hanging lantern pick, go to Contigo Tiki Bar's Etsy store. I'll put a link in the description below. And of course, if you like the straw from Surfside Sips, this is the, uh, their bamboo straw. It's actually made out of glass. Works super well. And if you type in the coupon code BREEZEWAY at checkout, you will get a little bit of a discount and I will get a little bit of a kickback. So thank you so much. This mug is a faithful recreation of the mug that they used at the Tapa Room in Hawaii. The reason why this is significant is because it was one of the first mugs that we ever see a hanging lantern garnish in. And this mug even appeared on the show The Hawaiian Eye. So tie all that together. Crazy, right? I wish I would have bought the mug when Kevin and Jody came out with it. Kevin Kidney and Jody Daly are a duo of creators, uh, actually art directors from Disney. Yeah, like art directors from Disney. So yeah, they're pretty good at art. They did a tiki mug of the Hawaiian Eye logo tiki. I remember it coming out and I remember going, oh, I don't really need that. And God, if I, it kills me when I don't buy the mugs that end up being really, really significant to me later on down the line. That's what I think is so interesting about this mug. Not because it's the most elaborate tiki mug ever carved. It's really pretty primitive. But the fact that this looks so similar and so faithful to the original sculpt from the Tapa Room, I think it'll end up being a significant art piece in the tiki world. For the people who really go beyond the surface level tiki stuff and really delve into the historic stuff, I think this is going to be an important mug. So what is significant about this mug is that this mug was not only featured on the Hawaiian Eye in one of the episodes, but also this was the mug that served the Tapa Punch by Harry Yi at the Tapa Room at the Hilton Hawaiian Village in 1959. There is significance. I think it's really cool. I, at first glance you go, I don't, what? I don't really get it. But then when you realize the history behind it, that makes all the difference in the world to me. Except that I think I put too much ice in here because it's really getting to be a pain in the ass to drink. It's kind of not a giant cocktail. Like there wasn't a whole lot of cocktail in it, but this is very distracting. I'm trying to drink and this thing's bobbling all over the place. But that's kind of the fun of it too, you know? And folks, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you did enjoy this cocktail, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Check out our Patreon for our Breezeway Cocktail Hour enamel pin. And uh, we will see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha! Last week, what did we do last week? But this is a mug that was seen in photographs. Um, but in sheesh, a light aged rum. This is we're gonna be using. Come on, dude. I guess the mix of that. Um, I guess the mix of the honey syrup. Er, God damn it. Kevin Daly and Jody. Foster? No. Mm. I can tell a quick story. I got a story. The last time that I was in Waikiki, why did I say it like that? The last time that I was in Waikiki was probably like 10 years ago, something like that now. I had rented a surfboard. Uh, you know, I've been surfing for a long time. I rented a surfboard from like the Beach Boys there on the beach in Waikiki. 
the song, by the way. It was like a big longboard. It wasn't like the best longboard I've ever ridden or whatever, but it, it got the job done. And the waves are so slow and rolly. All you need are like a couple of good paddles and then you're up and riding. So many tourists there have no clue of how to surf. So if you can surf, you can get all the waves you want. That day was like a particularly fun day. It was probably like shoulder high waves. They're probably like about this big, which is good size. Like once you get going and you're standing up, you're like, all right, waves about this big, enough to push you and you know do some turns. And so this like perfect wave is coming and I'm paddling, I'm going, and I'm just about to pop up, and all of a sudden from behind me, this dude comes screaming down the line, and I turn and I look, it's this old dude, like 80 something years old, and he goes, hey, hey, and I was like, what the, f oh, sh and I back paddled, I was like, okay. Rabbit Kakai, like one of the most legendary Hawaiian surfers of all time, and I almost like shoulder hopped Rabbit Kakai. I would have looked back and gone, uh, sorry, dude, and pulled right off, but yeah, that was my story. That was my story about surfing in Waikiki. It's a good time. There's nothing better than surfing in Waikiki. And I can't imagine how it was for like Robert Conrad in 1959 to be surfing Waikiki, like before it was even a, a state, probably uncrowded, you know what I mean? Because tourism hadn't really hit there yet. Not like it did after it became a state. To be able to spend all those days on the beach with Connie Stevens, like, dreams of it's just a shame that all of the really incredible tiki bars were torn down like through the 60s and 70s, I, mostly the 70s and 80s, I think. And most of that decor ended up going to La Mariana, which is more towards Honolulu. Tiki's per square foot, you would say, it's ridiculous. All of the decor went to this one place. There are like a zillion stacked headhunter, cannibal tiki poles there all kinds of decor, fish floats and puffer fish. So many carvings, so, so many carvings. Pretty incredible place. And I just wish that the shell bar and the tapper room hadn't been changed over the years. Like it'd be so rad if they just stayed the same, but what Hilton, Hilton's not gonna leave that stuff alone, you know? They're not gonna leave it like it was in 1960, 1960? <laughs> like why would they? Everything progresses. Unfortunately, and even look at the international marketplace. It was well, it was pretty junky for a long time, but instead of preserving it and resuscitating it, they just bulldozed the whole thing and turned it into like a major mall. And they're like, it's still in the, in the spirit of Don the Beachcomber. And it's like, uh, no, it's not, dude. There's like Rolex stores and Tiffany and Co. and like Gucci and, and I always say it, but time traveling through cocktails. That's like, I think the best part about this series is we can go to 1963 in Burbank where Connie Stevens and Robert Conrad were having cocktails. This cocktail, you know, after shooting. Pretty cool.